Hey everyone, what's good? Today I'm going to do a little bit of live research. I just stumbled across a few interesting things that I want to share with you all. Let me actually get off this page and open it up in another window here. If you guys can hear me, can you drop a comment below? I'm going to record this and put it up on YouTube later. Okay, there we go. I have it all opened up. Can someone drop a comment in the chat below just so I know this is working correctly? Cool. Hey, Tara, how are you doing? It's a bit early. A bit early. It's Friday morning currently. I will right, we'll let a few more people get in here and then we'll then we will get started. How is everyone doing? Helps me make money. Absolutely. Alright, so I'm just gonna jump into this right now. Um I was up late last night reading a bunch of Merch by Amazon Facebook groups and a lot of people were complaining about lack of sales and you know Q4 and a huge lull, basically what is going on. Uh, I have seen lower sales, I don't know what is going on, but I do want to bring kind of to people's attention that I think it's I think it's a lot of people that aren't actually adapting to the platform. So I kind of wanted to go over that, do some research, and show you this really cool site that I found. So, when you guys want an easy niche, uh, jukebox. So I've been doing some research here. I actually started. I have a bunch of tabs open. Hold on. Not that one. I actually started with vinyl over here. As you can see, there is about 3,000 results. Got there through Merch Research, just hit vinyl, and was searching through these things. And the first result I see is this one, okay? So people are complaining about low sales, and this is the kind of stuff that they are creating. So I don't, I don't know about you, but me personally, I think this is pretty low effort. You know, I'm not a designer, I don't ever claim to be, but I do know this, this probably uh, could could be improved upon by hiring someone who knows what they're doing, and as you can see, hasn't sold. Now, from vinyl, I kind of was looking at this, and I went over to Pinterest, and I saw this vinyl dad shirt down here. Now, let's see, where, where was it? Vinyl has a bunch of results, so that was out. I was trying to niche down a little bit, typed in vinyl dad, that's where I came up with all of these. Now, this one has 954 results, still a bit much. So I was going through here, I was looking at different music things. I was looking at Pinterest over here. I saw Vinyl Dad. And then I came back to this and I was like, okay, it says Vintage Dad. This one says Vinyl Dad. And both of these designs are, they're, they're incredibly low effort. They are such low effort designs. That's why people don't see any sales. You can't spend 10 seconds on a design and wonder why you haven't retired tomorrow. So, highly recommended, I would highly recommend that you actually hire a you know, graphic artist who can actually draw different things. I mean, if you had some cartoon character spinning a record and you can reuse that over and over again, you could put Final Dad below it, you could put Vintage Dad below it, you could put all types of different music sayings on it, and it would actually sell. I mean, a good example of this is, I use this guy a lot in examples. But look at this guy's artwork. And if you scroll through here, this brand, I mean, he's got more reviews than probably anyone else watching this. And this guy is spending time, I don't know if he does it himself or not, but he's spending time with his assets. He's not spending 15 seconds to put Vintage Dad on a you know, clip art. Or he's not spending a whole three seconds typing Vinyl Dad in Photoshop or something. It's just so low effort. You guys have to like put forth a little bit more time in your designs. Or what I like to do is hire people who know what they're doing. Because I'm not a designer, but I can spot things that will sell or will not sell. And something like this is probably a large contributing reason of why people are not selling. All right. Now I'm going to look at the comments here. Let's see. 
There's a lot of room for improvement there. Absolutely. There's a lot of... See, I get a lot of flack for saying that things can be improved upon. People are like, he's telling people to copy. I'm not. I'm telling people to do something different. This, let's open this up again. No good. You can do a lot better than that. It doesn't... You don't have to put you know, clip art and text and do that 10,000 times. That's really not the best way to make money on the platform. All right. So now that we've gone over that, let me see, where was I? I have so many tabs open when I do my research. I just decided to do a, a random live today, so we'll see where I'm at. Came across vinyl. Somehow I was scrolling through here and I found, you know, jukebox. Um, if you type in jukebox, there's 81 results. Now when you're typing something in, if you scroll to the bottom and you click like the last page, sometimes this changes. Sometimes this will change up here. You might see 200 results and think, wow, this niche is really great. But if you scroll to the bottom, you click, you know, third, fourth page, this 81 might change to, you know, 2,000, 10,000, something like that. But if you, you know, there's only two pages, you click to the second page, you scroll back up and say, okay, there's only 81 results selling. And here they all are. And what you can do is I actually threw this in a merch form. I want to see which ones are actually selling well. What merch form is going to do is going to put them in order of best sellers. So you can come through and kind of take a look. I kind of landed on this one. This is probably the first, I mean, you can go through here. This is the first one that kind of sticks out with an actual jukebox on it. Which I thought was eh, decent, still a little bit low effort. This might be someone that's watching, so sorry about that. As you can see, it is selling not too well, but it is selling. So at this point, you know, I, I've, I've done my research. I've, I've gone from, where is it? Somewhere in here, guys. I've gone from vinyl. So I've gone from vinyl to vinyl dad to jukebox. So that's kind of how I've you know, narrowed down the niche. You have this big, big niche vinyl over, enter it again. So here's a good example, 383 results, but if you scroll down and you click, say, the third page, all of a sudden it says over 3,000 results. So big, big niche vinyl. You know, I noticed on Pinterest over here it said Vinyl Dad, so that's what I did, entered Vinyl Dad, 954 results. And I went from there, you know, I scrolled through the results, I took a look, and I ended up on Jukebox, which is 81 results. So you can use all those keywords in your listing in order to actually get ranked for the big keywords like vinyl. And it all starts with these little keywords like jukebox, and you can put jukebox dad, something like that, and put effort into your listing. So if I were to do this, I would actually hire a graphic artist. I have a few illustrators that work for me that I just recently hired, which are amazing. I could have them actually create jukeboxes and then, you know, I personally can type, so I can add all different sorts of messages below there and maybe hit all three of these, you know, jukebox dad, final dad, and uh, I think that I think that was that was the only one. So I mean, you can you can definitely play with the options. It's niche though. It's niche, niche. Well, okay. Technically, I guess the word is French. I think. Read the comments here, but. I live in America, so I'm gonna call it niche. So I'm not French. And niche just sounds weird. All right, so let me close out a few of these tabs here. Now another option for doing is, so in, if you don't wanna hire an artist and you don't wanna deal with that, but you wanna find people who are if you want to bring create creativity to the platform, you don't want to do it yourself, which I certainly don't want to do it myself. Uh, licensing, really, really good idea. So I actually headed over to, I think it was Behance. I don't know if I have it open over here. I couldn't really find anything that I was looking for, so I just Googled you know, sites like Behance. So as you can see in the URL up here, sites like Behance or Behance or however, however you want to say it ended up on this page and I saw art station to open that up which look at that cool little fox guy so it brings you to a site like this now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to actually do your research on merge informer find people who are already creating art and then just contact them so 
you can you can uh, what I did is I just came over here and I was actually looking for something different which I'll show you in a minute but you can just type in anything in this tiny little search bar up here hit enter and it's going to show you all of the different artwork a lot of these are kind of game renders some of these might be from different games but as you saw this is the one I had open this little uh, gangster wolf guy so you can you can read what the design is about it is a uh, Allie Duggar had a uh, an idea for a gangster mafia wolf. She tried some stuff out and this is what she came up with. So and this is the kind of stuff that I think would sell on Amazon and you, you make a little bit of change to it. So Christmas is coming up. I might throw a Santa hat on this guy and sell it. But in order to do that, you have to do two things. One, you have to actually make sure there's demand for the niche. So you'd probably go into the product search, something like that, and see what exactly is selling in this niche, and would something like this sell? And if it does, then you need to license her artwork. So th this site is amazing. So you, you find something you like, you click on their name up here. Here's Allie, she's an art student. She's from uh, Columbia, and she's got this website here. So all you do is you click on her name. She's an art student, so students are great people to, um, License, simply click this uh, this link here. It'll open up her, her portfolio. And up in the right-hand corner, you just click Contact, which gives you an email and a form. And you just fill it out, and you just have to talk to people. It's really that easy. So I'll show you another example. And we can go back here. Let's go to ArtStation. What do you guys want me to search for? Throw some ideas in there. So I'm just going to search for like really simple stuff like dog and cat. Does anyone want me to search for anything or have comments stopped? Okay. Let me just refresh this quick. All right. So I'm just going to search for... Actually, I'm just going to show you what I have open. So let me let me close this. So here's here's another character from the same lady. You can see I clicked on her name. I went through her portfolio. I clicked on this. She's got a bunch of different characters, like Wild West characters. You can come over to Merchformer again. Make sure there's demand in you know, the Wild West kind of Western culture, and then reach out to her and ask her if you can license her characters. You can dress these people up. I mean, a lot of the big brands on Amazon, they just take the same characters and they reuse them for different holidays. I mean, you might have an Easter bunny, you know, this person might be holding an egg, you might have a Santa Claus hat on this person. You can reuse the same artwork, but this site is so amazing for actually licensing people because all you have to do, let's see what else I have open here. I have her open a lot, apparently. And we can just click on any of these. How about this one? Lin Chang, you click on his name, you click on his, his link here, now this is a little different, you might not see it right away. We'll go to resume. Okay, this person actually doesn't have... Okay, so you, you might run into that, that's fine. We'll go back, and we'll go back again. Let me actually search for, I don't know, cat. Hamster, all right, I see hamster in the chat, so let's, let's search for hamster. <laughs> I don't know what this is or if it's from something. Now, if it's from like a movie or something, don't don't use it. But again, we'll, we'll click on their name. You now we see a see a link here. We'll click on the link and let's see if they have a contact information. Not here. Sometimes they have it on the resume. Sometimes they don't. This person doesn't. They do have some good stuff though. Stormtrooper. Okay, let's go back. Let's let's find a better hamster. How about that? What? <laughs> I don't even know what he's eating there. Overwatch. Okay, if it's from Over... I don't know. Is this one from Overwatch? If this one's from Overwatch, we won't use it. This one might be. This looks Overwatchy. But anyways. Some of these people... Okay, so this is this is a different website. You know, we have a uh, resume. We'll check the resume. And there you go. 
you know, the information, they're from Japan, you can reach out to them. If they ask, ask to see their their entire portfolio, maybe they haven't uploaded it all to this, this website. It's called artstation.com, if you guys can't read that. But you just reach out to people. It's really that easy. You reach out to them. You kind of strike up a conversation first, ask them if you can license their work, explain you know, what you're willing to pay, when you want to pay it, and kind of go forward from there. So really, 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 really easy if you don't want to hire people. Now, let's say we were looking for a jukebox, which was the original example I was trying to use. Look at all these different types of jukeboxes. So I could find, I don't know, this one looks pretty cool. 3D, 3D jukebox here. Now I could open up this person's profile, see if I can license them. Resume, and let's see. No, no email. So let's say I was, I was really set on a 3D jukebox like this, and I really wanted to put it on a shirt. I message a bunch of people. They don't, they don't want to work with me. That's fine. I would go out, and then I would hire an actual illustrator, an actual artist, to create designs which I can then again I'm creating an asset here so the asset would be the jukebox which I can use again and again and again for you know if you guys were here earlier vinyl dad what else did I have oh, vinyl vinyl dad and uh, vintage vintage dad I think was the other one extremely easy but you have to put in a little bit of effort unlike uh, the first design I was showing you guys I don't know if it's open here no, there's a different tab. Just extremely low effort stuff is, yeah, it can sell, but if you spend 98% of your time throwing things up that aren't, don't even stand a chance to sell, you're just wasting your time. All right, let's see what else I have over here. I'm gonna close up some tabs. This I found just scrolling through results. It is selling, but uh, this is, I believe, Dungeons and Dragons. Don't do this. Whoever took the time to actually draw this up, not a good idea, guys. However, however, they did actually take the time to create an asset, this, which, if it was legal to use on merch, you could use over and over again. But that, that's the whole goal here, is do your research, find where people are spending money, and then spend either the money, spend the time, or reach out to people to make sure that your business has assets that you can use and not 10 second, you know, font types that you put up just because you did. All right, closing that out. What else do we have open here? Bug lover collage. Oh yeah, so I was searching for, I ran across this in Merge Informer over here. I was searching for collector collection, as you can see here. And I opened up this here, so people collect bugs, and I'm sitting here thinking, okay, all this is is a bunch of different bugs on a shirt. I can do that, right? Any Anyone watching this can throw a bunch of bugs on a shirt, but then there would be 10,000 shirts with a bunch of bugs on the shirt. So I went over to Google, and I typed, what things do people collect? And there's article after article about the millions of things this is a terrible article. I hate those. You have to click through. Top 10 things people collect. Movies, coins, video games. So let's go back to Merchant Former and type in coin collector. All right, 314 results. We have that. So let's go into here in the product search. We'll just type in coins. And meanwhile, we'll go back here and we'll just look at what is selling what is actually out there coin collecting so this is the first results five reviews price low i think you'll notice guys that um a lot of the shirts that are actually selling right now people that are actually seeing an increase in sales rather than complaining on facebook are pricing low to get these reviews because once you have these reviews the sales don't stop that is that is literally the most important piece i think after the design and optimization and research is getting these reviews and the, honestly the only way I know to get a lot of reviews is to price low for quite a while. I know people aren't gonna agree with that but that is my opinion, it works for me. But anyways, let's see, coin collecting, the only hobby where you can go bankrupt and still have money. 
Not bad. I don't like the design. Um, looks pretty low resolution, honestly. But I, I would change a few things out. Let's go back to Merge Former, see what's selling here. So, <laughs> funny thing. So, we entered in coins, right? And when it came up, it looked like a lot of cryptocurrency stuff, which I tend to stay away from. Some of this stuff is trademarked. Always make sure you're doing your trademark checks. You want to make sure that you are not getting in trouble. Let's see here. What is this? Okay, so talk about low effort. All they did was they put a quarter on a shirt. And it is selling, but it's not selling very well. This is what I'm talking about, guys. That is that is the lowest effort shirt you could possibly do. All right, let's I'm I'm going to go back to comments here. I've kind of been ignoring you guys. Let's see. Love the quick designer. Thank you. Yeah, the designer, uh, the merch, if you just go over to designer. Actually, I don't have it auto-saved here. Inside here, you can go to the designer here. And I will log in. Pick a shirt. Hopefully nothing bad pops up. We actually just added this mask feature over here. You can upload any different kind. Uh, you know, so if you have a text, if you have a design, upload any different image you want. So... The one I think I used in the blog post was an American flag. You just upload an image, like an American flag, and you, it basically adds a filter over whatever part of your design you want, and then you just download it. So you don't have to use this to create designs. Let's say you hired a designer. You can actually just upload your images here. So upload your design, add your filters, add your different masks, whatever you want, part of the design, download it, and then upload it to Merch. So incredibly easy. Merch Momentum came out with a whole guideline article, stuff people collect. Dude, people collect people collect everything. It's kind of incredible. Half the time, people collect things that you really wouldn't. I mean, rock collections, coin collections, all that stuff is kind of common knowledge. But people collect some weird stuff, man. Merch Informer has all things that a merchant needs. Boy, thank you very much. I, I hope so. If anyone has any suggestions, you should you know reach out to me. Which, by the way, a lot of people private message me. Probably the easiest way to get in touch is through the Merchant Former contact uh, help desk because I get so many messages that go into my other folder. I don't see them. So just a heads up for you guys. Okay, back to what I was doing. Let's keep uh, looking here again. This is probably the same guy. We're searching for coins. He put a penny on a shirt. Incredibly low effort. There's a lot of uh, theoretical Ripple millionaire. So Ripple's a, a cryptocurrency for all you guys who don't know. But let me close out some of these. That's what I was doing, was closing these tabs out. Let's see, coins. Coin collecting, final, got there. Okay, so when I was doing, sorry I'm jumping all over the place, but when I was doing my um, my research on the vinyl, and, you know, records and collection, I was kind of doing research on music as a whole, and I saw this, and I said, okay, it's a milk crate, it's got a bunch of records in it, that's pretty normal. Three reviews, but it says diggers on it, really not sure what that is, I saw that it's selling, it has three reviews, like why why is this selling? So if you just take this, I don't know, crate diggers, record collector, just take that. If you don't know what something is, just Google it. And as soon as I did that, I saw that this is actually um it looks like a YouTube channel. So I, I'm willing to bet that where was this guy? This guy is not part of this YouTube channel. So don't, guys, just don't do this stuff. It's so easy to make sales without infringing on people's stuff. All right, let's see here. Close that out. List of people, things that people collect. Video games, CDs, rocks, stamps, stamps. Let's try that. So, stamps, we'll search there. Again, Merchant Form is gonna show you exactly what's selling in order. 
and then merch research stamps this is just going to show you anything that's up on amazon in no order whatsoever okay so again 335 results we come down here it might be a lot more than that click third page so over 2,000 results right I, I always recommend to go do that so you're going to be competing with a lot of people here so what I might do next is let's check merchant former let's see it doesn't look like a ton of oh this is an interesting idea so a passport stamp for different pe for people going on different vacations that's not a bad idea at all you could look up so let's see i'm gonna google it again because i don't know top vacation spots and here we go paris france new york that's the shortest list ever i'll well, keep reading new york rome cancun so what i would do probably Super, super, super easy. You look up Paris, um, what are we looking up here? Paris passport stamp. So Paris is in France, the France passport stamp. Go to Google Images here, and you can go through and kind of figure out, welcome to France. You, you can figure out what kind of passport stamps people are getting put in their passport, and then you can come out with a brand of shirts that has the top the top vacation spots, their passport stamps, and put that under one brand. Just so easy. Kristen Harris thinks that this is cute. This right here, this uh, passport stamp is cute to you, Kristen? To each their own, I guess. To each their own. But uh, let's see, Pat, and we'll go over here to Pinterest here, and we'll type in passport shirt for some more ideas. See, same thing. I mean, this, this is the same kind of concept, I think. This is probably the stamp that you get when you go to, uh, what's this, Italy? But a lot of different, exact Mexico, this one is, can't even see that. Morocco. I mean, think of all the countries on Earth, and there, there's a, there's a, I don't know, is there a thousand plus? There's a thousand plus T-shirt ideas for one brand. Really, not that hard. I was looking in the. <laughs> all right, so let's close that out. There's another idea for you guys. Now, for the past few days, I've actually been posting different research ideas in the big Facebook group. I am actually kind of curious how many people listen to those and actually put some effort into them. That would be interesting to see. Let's see. Aren't these passport stamps TM by the airport company? Dude, I, I don't know. See, that's the thing. I'm not, I'm not going to put something up without checking on it. Um, you always want to make sure you're doing your trademark checks and your copyright checks before you upload anything. You know, right now I'm just kind of doing research on the fly, live video. But before you upload anything, I don't care what it is, you have to do those checks to keep your account safe. Really, it's, that's it. I mean, that's literally the bottom line. There's no excuse for uploading something that's trademarked now if you don't do your checks. You just have to do them. Let's see, I love Merch Informer only for Merch Hunter. So the Merch Hunter, if you guys aren't aware, we actually added pop sockets to here. And you can come down here and see the best selling pop sockets on Amazon, which I know a lot of people, their t-shirt sales have declined a bit, but some of the pop sockets are really starting to take off. I know I posted a controversial uh, post the other day about rose gold. Rose gold, using rose gold and pop sockets. Uh, probably stay away from it. I, some people were getting some rejections for it. I put one up um, as a rose gold color, not a metallic thing. It went through. But again, I don't really recommend trying to skirt any rules. So take that as you will. 
as you can see, here is a, a very, very, very high selling pop socket. And it's not a design. I think that's a lot. Of, if you go through these pop sockets, I mean, so many of these, this is design, this is the design, this is design, this isn't. This is just a, you know, a pattern. This is a pattern. You know, you got a pattern in the background here. Pattern in the background here, the design over the top. The pop sockets, if you, if you want to put, if you want to sell a lot of pop sockets, you, you need to put forth, you need to put forth effort, but they're a lot lower effort than t-shirt designs, I would say. Kristen Harris, I think they're governmental. Are we still talking about the, um, the passport stamps here? Yeah, that's what, that's what I would assume off the bat. But again, I'll always check if, if, if the, if the airport has a trademark to those or they're copyright written, don't touch them. Let's see. Okay. So keep going through here. We got some monogram selling simple cat stuff. Black diamond gemstone. I mean, look, look at this. So this is selling incredibly well. Ooh, got taken down. Black diamond gemstone. I wonder why this got taken down. Well, this is okay. This, this is a good example of what I was talking about. Don't mislead the consumer by saying that your black diamond gemstone image is going to be the super sparkling pop socket. Um, this is actually by pop socket though, so maybe not, but you, you as a seller on merch cannot do this. You cannot tell people that your pop socket is polished, sparkling and metallic at the same time, apparently a matte finish. Just <laughs> don't, don't do that. There's, there's no reason for it. Your pop socket is not going to print metallic, sparkling and polished. And this doesn't really make sense. How can you be metallic and matte at the same time? I don't know. Don't do it. So pretty, pretty easy. We got a, a Shane Dawson image here. <laughs> Shane Dawson is just killing merch, killing it. The gemstone is in 3D. Let's open. Well, I can't open it up. I can just look at it here. Yeah, perfect for expensive diamond and flawless, shiny, polished, brilliant jewelry lovers. Jewelers, wealthy girls, rat like again. This is such low effort. I cannot believe people do this and think they're gonna make sales. Why? I mean, yeah, they were making a bunch of sales, but now their stuff's taken down. And they have a strike against their account. If this isn't Pop Socket, if this is a merch seller, Might see the 404 page because you're on a Mac. I am not on a Mac. There's no way I could do these lives on a Mac. I have a couple screens in front of me. But again, so this, you know, pattern, image, image. Now here, this is a good, let's open this up. Features Santa with a rosy nose. I'm wondering where he got this image. Maybe he licensed it. So I don't know. Let's go see what what Art Station has. This new site I found for uh, Santa. Uh, that did not work. Let's see, Santa. Search projects, maybe. Not too many Santas on this website. So let's try Behance. Santa. So here's a good example. I don't know who this is. Multiple owners. So this is there's two owners here. I'll open these two guys up. But all of these, if you license this work, these would be excellent for pop sockets. Look, they even animated some stuff. I mean, seriously, this this kind of stuff is so good for pop sockets. You don't have to pay anyone. All you have to do is send someone an email. If they have one active, look, you can message him right here. You just you click his name, you click message, and you, you know, sign into your Behance account, and then message the guy. Or message this guy. Same thing, message him. Super easy. Is that the Coca-Cola Santa? 
Uh, back here. Who are we looking at? Him? That might be. That might be the Coca-Cola Santa. I don't know. And if it is the Coca-Cola Santa, don't do that. But the research still remains the same. You know, you, you came in merchant form and received this is a top selling pop socket. If this is the merchant form, uh, <laughs> excuse me, the Coca-Cola Santa, don't do that. But you can go out there and create your own artwork. If you're an artist, if you're not, please hire someone, put some effort into it. And if you don't want to do that, go license someone. I mean, this this is not the Coca-Cola gingerbread man. So you can <laughs> you can definitely use something like this as long as you license them or create your own. So really that easy. Ray, missed the beginning. Well, it's it'll it'll replay on Facebook as soon as it's done, so you can go back and catch me ranting ranting about different niches and research there. Three is the magic number. Alright, let's see here. Close out some pop sockets. Again. Don't do this unless you look it up. I don't know if the if the, the passport stamps are trademarked or copywritten. But if they're not, that's an excellent idea for like the top 10 vacation spots. Or if you have a ton of slots available, there's a lot of countries on planet Earth with passport stamps. So really not as hard as people make it out to be. Let's see here. Ooh, we got we have a llama pop socket here. Well, so we have, oh, here's a, here's a record pop socket. So again, what I was talking about previously, now this is gonna look pretty cool as, you know, it's a pop socket, it's round. But if you guys were here at the beginning, we were doing research on vinyl. And I was making the argument for creating assets for your merch business rather than being lazy and, you know, just doing text-based design. So if you were to create the example was Vinyl Dad, I believe. If you were to create an actual dad-looking like character who's spinning a record or kicking back and sitting down and listening to his vinyl collection, you can reuse that. You can put that in a pop socket. You can put as much different text on that as you want. But you can take that asset that you paid for or you created or that you licensed and use that. And you're using it based on the research that you're doing. So you you're validating that it gets searches, you're validating that it gets sales, that customers want it, there's customer demand there, and you're just giving the customer a better product by creating that asset instead of the low effort that I see all across merch. What do you mean by licensing as opposed to paying the designer? So when I say paying a designer, I'm typically talking about going on Upwork or online jobs you know, posting a job listing where someone will come and they will work for you and you'll pay them, say, I don't know, $10 and they will sit there and illustrate a design for you. And sit. it's basically, they sell you the design or you're buying their time to create the design. With licensing, you're going to be finding people who have already, they have created the artwork and you're gonna contact them and basically say, look, I wanna license your artwork for these products. I'm gonna put your artwork on these products you know, with my own type of text or flair. It really depends on what kind of agreement you make. And then you're going to pay them a royalty every say three four months based on what you sell so let's say you sell a hundred pop sockets you make a couple hundred bucks maybe your your agreement with them is that you license them for i don't know let's just say 50 percent to make it really easy i i probably would never license someone at 50 percent but then you would give them you know a hundred and whatever dollars it is every quarter let's say and then because you can use their art and you can keep using it over and over again. You didn't have to put any effort into that art except for uploading it, and you're gonna pay them a royalty based on what you earn. And there, guys, there's not very many people licensing artists. And the ones who are licensing artists, there's a few people I've talked to that are licensing artists, they're just licensing anything and everything they can get but it's not based on any sort of research. I think that's the part that people are missing. If you're going to license people, do your research, find what people are buying, and then go find the artists that are delivering to the market exactly what people want. And then you're just the, you're just the bridge between them living wherever they live 
and the people that are buying Umbridge by Amazon. You're just the bridge between them that are putting up, you're licensing their artwork. The people on Amazon want that artwork. They don't know they want that artwork yet because they haven't seen it. So that's basically your job. What would you license someone for, depending on the niche? Uh, I would probably say 10 to 20%. Now, if someone's really, really good and they know their worth and they've done licensing deals before, that might be a little bit harder. But if you, if you, you know, the, I don't know if you, you were here at the beginning, Tara. The, that student, I mean, most students have never even licensed anything. They just do this for fun. They do this in their free time. And if they already have a big collection of work, you just reach out to them and start the conversation. Now, I don't, I don't want to rip people off, but at the same time, I'm in this to make money. So you kind of have to find the middle ground where both parties are happy. I mean, if, if all they have to do is send you a Dropbox link, a Dropbox link of all their images, and they get paid every quarter, all they had to do is send you one link, and you send them money every quarter, like they're going to be extremely happy with probably anything you give them. How do you make sure they're not double dipping? Double dipping as in, as in how? I mean, it's all, it's all in the contract you create. And you create the contract based on having a conversation. So you really just, you need to get used to talking to people, one, and you have to get really used to just getting rejected, which you're gonna get rejected a ton. I could probably message all of these people here, every single one I showed you, and they could all probably tell me either no, they could ignore me, or they could tell me to F off. But, you know, you might get that one in a hundred who says yes, and they have a portfolio of 10,000 designs. And I know a few people who have done that. One or two are probably watching this right now. And now they have 10,000 pieces of artwork that they can easily turn into 20, 30, 40,000 different designs because their contract states that they can add text to that design or they can change different elements of that design. And all, and literally, it's so little effort on your part because one, you don't have to pay people up front. That's probably the best part. Two, you're hiring, you're not hiring, but you're licensing people who have talent rather than you know you or I. I mean, I'm certainly not an artist. I don't ever claim to have any artistic talent whatsoever when it comes to merch. So using other people's talent in order to make sales is excellent. How do you trust people to pay you accurately? Again, it's it's down to the contract. You know, your contract can say that you pull reports at you know at this time. Uh, I know Ken. I, Ken might be watching this. I know what Ken does, or he used to do, is the licensed products. He would put up, you know, something in the listing. So when you did pull down the report of all your sales, you can easily sort that and pull out the licensed stuff, and then that's how you can go go from there. Okay. Let's keep going through these pop sockets. This is cool. What is this? Little wave. Oh, Amazon's choice for apparently vintage pop socket. I like this. I wonder if this is the same guy. Let's see. Sassy Southern Charm and Grace. I bet it is. Yep. So this this person I don't really like like the rest of their brand, but they they have pretty cool looking artwork. I don't know if they did that themselves, but this is the type of stuff that you can license. It's this type of stuff. I can't draw that. I'm assuming ninety nine percent of the people that are watching this cannot draw something like this, but someone on the internet can, and you can contact them, you can talk to them, you can ask them for a licensing deal. Or you can go to Upwork or online jobs and just pay someone 20 bucks to create this for you. I don't know if it'll sell. It's got one review, so it must have sold. You know, it's got a, got a BSR, so this is selling. So if you pay someone $20, you know, you never have to pay another penny in licensing costs. It's based on research you did, so you know that it's going to sell. This is, you know, a pop socket that's selling, it's the same brand. So we went from hey, this pop socket is selling really well to look at everything else that's selling really well right underneath it. Same brand. Either pay people. You never have to pay them again. Hopefully you recoup your costs. Maybe you don't. That's, that's the risk you're willing to pay. Willing to take, rather. And you have to do your research 
previously. So I, I don't do much licensing. I mostly pay for my designs simply because I know that my research is solid and that, they w that I will recoup my money. But with licensing, you could throw up 10,000 licensed designs that if they never sell, you never have to pay a penny. Like, yeah, the person you license from is probably going to be pretty disappointed, but you don't have to pay a single dime to get started with licensing. None. Trying to think of names for my pop sockets. What kind of names? What, what are you having issues with? Are you doing uh, designs or patterns? They have a ton of pop sockets. There are a lot of people with a lot of pop sockets because you can throw them up extremely quickly. I don't know, man. Pop, I, I thought pop sockets were the dumbest thing on the planet until I actually got one from Ken. He printed one and email or mailed it to me and put it on my phone and I play with that thing all the time. It's incredible. Okay, so let's close these out. We'll keep going down the pop stocks a bit more. But again, I think you're starting to notice that so many of these are not artwork. They're just different patterns. A lot of the different marble patterns. This is I don't even know how you describe that pattern. Let's see. Gl uh, <laughs> glitter pop socket with a one star review. How much you want to bet this one star review is something about it's not shiny? We'll go down here. Adhesive did not last long. Okay, so the adhesive. I was wrong, but I wouldn't put glitter in your listings. It's kind of playing with fire. Merch doesn't want you to mislead the customer. And sometimes the customer doesn't read a single one of these. They just look here. They don't, they don't read any of this. They just look here and they click add to cart and maybe they're disappointed. I don't know. Couple one stars in a row. Oh, I didn't notice this one had a one star. Let's, let's see what that's about. Again, guys, this is, this is the problem that we were talking about. The lines on the pop socket are not metallic as the picture leads you to believe. So marble pattern is very soft. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so let's go up and read their bullet points. It says gold lines on white marble. So I don't think that's misleading. This does look a little bit metallic, though. I, I will give them that. Golden lines pattern on white marble pop socket. Uh, okay. I don't, personally, I don't think this is too misleading. But... I've seen a lot of one-star reviews on any kind of metallic stuff. And that at, at the end of the day, even if you're not trying to mislead a customer, sometimes the customer misleads themselves because they're too damn lazy to read. They just look at the image. They're like, wow, I really like that image. Add to cart. And then you get a one-star review, which can tank your listings. So I know how that goes. Don't use the word glitter. Absolutely don't use the word glitter. I don't know how that one is still up, this one. I know glitter definitely gets takedowns. I don't know if they go under review right away or if Merch has added that to their filter or not. Stop showing all my best. If these are your best sellers, I'm gonna, I feel a little bit bad that you got these one star reviews, but these are probably not your best sellers. All right. Again, you're probably gonna see a lot of these Always make sure that you look at this and you say, okay, I'm not going to just put a random cat on a pop socket that looks like this because it's a brand. Now, I know a lot of people don't speak English the best. They're in merch or, you know, they're not familiar with, with Hello Kitty, which is fine. But if you don't know what that is, if you don't know what something is, don't just go make it. You know, you can literally just Google this whole thing. You don't need to. But let's say you don't have any earthly idea what this is. You just Google it and you go, okay, Hello Kitty, Hello Kitty, if you go to images, you see all the same looking kitty and you might think to yourself, wow, I don't own that IP, maybe I shouldn't do that. Alrighty, so, yep, don't do that. Another pattern, super low effort pattern, but uh, I like it. Amazon choice for pops. <laughs> I don't know how Amazon decides what to put an Amazon choice on and 
and where they come up with this. Maybe it's what people are searching. Let's see if it's clickable. 220 results for pop socket checkered. And look at all of those designs. Some of these are a little different than others. Huh. Yeah, it's selling. So I guess that I guess that's another thing you can do. If you come across a pop socket that says it's Amazon's choice, just click on whatever it's Amazon's choice for and see if there's room for you to compete. Again, here here I wonder if this 404 is new. This is a big no no on merch. Glitter Rose <laughs> use the rose gold thing that I was arguing about people. This this is not good. This is it is selling very well. Don't put something like this up. Probably gonna get taken down at some point or get some really bad reviews. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Again, this the people probably think this is shiny too. It's not gonna be shiny, it's gonna print. It'll print really well. The the pop socket detail is really really good but it's not going to be shiny I don't do stuff like that Merry Christmas another uh, another pattern here more patterns wait a minute what is that okay so baby elephant pop socket rose gold that elephant looks pretty glittery to me, but you know this gives me an idea for. You can just open this up and type in cute animals. Thirty cute animals. Okay, look, you can add giraffes, chameleons, crocodiles, little, little duck. You can, you know, find your own background. Don't use this marble background. There's a hundred thousand different, you know marbly looking backgrounds don't add a glittered elephant but you can add maybe the outline or the silhouette of some sort of animal and then you can just do a whole brand of you know baby hippos i don't know people love sloths i know a lot of sloth shirts are selling put some make a line of pop socket uh sloth lover marble background things it's really really not i don't <laughs> So many people in the groups constantly talk about how research is so hard and every single thing is saturated and I don't understand how that's possible. You're either not trying or that I mean that's really all it comes down to. I, I feel like you have to not be trying it if you don't if you can't find niches that aren't saturated. They will all print very dull compared to the images from our experience so far. Yeah, nothing, none of the pop sockets I've ordered are vibrant. They all look really, really good, but none of them are really super bright. So I'm not exactly sure how they print, but they sure do last a while. I've had one on my phone for a year plus and it's been thrown around and dropped around and it looks a little bit beat up, but it, it looks good. But there is an excellent idea. I mean, I'm, I might actually throw a few of these up later after I'm done with, you know, silhouettes of different cute animals on my own background and call them something else. And I, I guarantee you that they would sell. Maybe not well, but they would sell. I know that they, they would sell. Then you have uh, something like this, which doesn't want to open. But uh, let's see. Oh. Probably because it got taken down because it said white sparkle. Again, these pop sockets don't sparkle. So don't do it. <laughs> I wonder if this is taken down yet. Uh, this, if you don't know, Philadelphia Eagles pop socket, Amazon's choice. Well, I wonder why that is. Because it's infringing. Look at all this infringing stuff. But, you know, merch will catch up to them. And this is probably the easiest way to lose your account. It, guys, it's really important that you don't do this sound stuff. Uh, 
Unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. I, you know, you, you spend time in the Facebook groups, you spend time just doing merch, and I don't know how people still do this. And they, you know, some, some people, some people do this stuff and then end up bragging in the groups about how great their sales are. And then, you know, 10 days later, they're asking how they can get their account back. Was it really worth all those sales that you're never going to see the money for because you had to infringe on people when it's this easy to find designs that aren't infringing and that you can put up? No. I don't know why people even go in. A, this isn't even a gray area. This is just straight out infringement. So don't do that either. We've got a Disney pop socket here. Now, this is another, I mean, you can go out there and license this kind of stuff. You're probably not going to get a license from Disney. But if there's maybe, maybe a, a smaller type of, you know, anime show that you like or something like that, maybe you can get licenses for that. I don't know. But, you know, it's, I would, don't say no before you try. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot to be said about actually opening the conversation and seeing what happens. Merch is hiring more people to screen submissions. Well, that's good. That is good. Huh. Uh, are you looking at Indeed, Amber? Or where did you see that? Let's see. Small gaming studio is a great place to license from. Dude, that... Okay, so that is actually a really good point. I saw on... Uh, I think it was Reddit the other day. Someone was asking about how to advertise in their mobile app because you know, if, if no one is familiar, Merch by Amazon started as a way to monetize mobile apps. So going after all the small gaming studios that create mobile games in order to sell their merch on, say, pop, mobile pop sockets or T-shirts or everything is a really great idea because merch is really, they're going more for the bigger brands, they're going more for the content creators like us, and they even remove the option for the SDKs to go into the apps. So that's just an opportunity for you to reach out and go, I mean, let's, let's just go to, you know, the Android, Android store, if I can spell here. Let's see, Android apps and new and updated games and look at all these games let's see see more every single one of these is an opportunity for you to make money every single one of them every single one of these games i don't even know what this is lost worlds of atlantis four out of five stars what if you could put this guy on a shirt and you know scroll down here and there are 5,000 plus installs. I don't know how many are active, but would see that shirt within their game and buy it. Like, yeah, you might not retire tomorrow on 5,000 installs, but it's still free money if you spend the time to open up the conversation. Really not that hard. So, I don't know what I was doing there. Back to Pop Sockets. Okay. The cool design. Sunflower skull. Now, a lot of the stuff that's going to work on pop sockets is not necessarily going to sell the best on t shirts. So, for example, this, this might sell on t shirts for like Day of the Dead stuff, but I would recommend if you were to put something like this on a shirt, use text as well. So, text plus design is always, has always been the best for me. I can speak for everyone, but for me personally, that is definitely what it's at. No problem, no problem. Ooh, some more llama drama. Let's see, Christmas is coming up, so this is not a bad design at all. I bet what they did is they just looked up some sort of um, wrapping paper this kind of looks like a wrapping paper design to me so you could just look up you know different patterns it doesn't have to be wrapping paper from a big brand or something like that don't do that but you could look up different just different christmas patterns and turn them all into pop sockets
close some of these out. Cool design, but it's a brand. Don't do it. All right, that's that's enough for pop sockets. Pop sockets are kind of boring. I like pop sockets, but pop socket research is just a lot of patterns, a lot of patterns, and a lot of infringement kind of type of stuff. So let's see. Let's go to Amazon shirts, U.S. Hundred thousand and above, a thousand. This is what I usually do. I don't look at the top stuff. I come way down here. Ooh, wonder if Stephanie is watching. Don't do this either, guys. Don't do this kind of infringement stuff. This is again such a great way to get your account banned. But what I will usually do is I'll scroll to the bottom and I'll go to like the seventh page, somewhere in the middle of. Middle of nowhere, but these are still selling. They're still selling. This one says uh, Cat Lady across your knuckles. So, again, this design, these knuckles are not terrible. I wouldn't say they're very good. There's a lot you can do here, though. Um, not even relating to cats. You can put anything across the knuckles. I mean, everyone, everyone has, what, four knuckles per hand? I mean, five, including your thumb, but you're not going to put anything there. So, there's a lot of different sayings and phrases that you can put here. Let's see, knuckle tattoo. Let's actually just look this up on Pinterest. Go over to Pinterest, we'll type in knuckle tattoo shirt. We can find anything funny. So here you have one. What they did is they put the two knuckles together and they put something on top. So Christian related shirt or you know, any kind of religion shirt you could put here. Good idea. What we got here? Bookworm. So let's actually go here and type in bookworm knuckle. See if anything comes up. Let's see here. Okay. Again, pretty low effort. I think there's a lot more you could do here. Or life. I mean, you could do something with, with libraries and book cards. I know those are pretty popular. Your knuckles say draw hard. Do they actually say draw hard, Drew? Do they actually say that? I don't know if I believe that. But again, let's see. Over to Pinterest. Over to Pinterest. Handmade, hell bent. So I mean, there's you could put this instead of you could you could use something like this in a biker design. Add a bike. Add a guy on a bike. Maybe you put something like this on someone's leather jacket that's sitting on a bike and you know driving off into the sunset. Now I don't know how to make that, but I know I can either hire people that do or license it for someone who has handmade. I mean, there's just so many different things you can do. Let's see, handmade knuckles. Let's see if that exists. Handmade knuckles. Nope. Maybe knuckle. Knuckle shirt. <laughs> what is this? Look at that sandwich t-shirt. Again, so there you go. There's a design nothing exists for. Uh, handmade. I mean, you, you could do this for an artist. You could do this for someone who crochets. You could do this for someone who has literally any type of hobby. You can use knuckles, and you can use any type of hobby you put in the background. There's, there's a brand right there. Easy. Easy. All right, Drew, I'm going to hold you that. If you find a picture of your knuckles and say draw hard, I'm going to be impressed. All right, let's close some of these out. Look, <laughs> you could even have a whole brand, a line of sandwiches. 
I have a feeling this has never sold before. Research made easy. That yeah, that is, that is the that is the point here. I want to show people that this really doesn't take that much effort. I mean, I don't know how long we've been doing this for. It's like about an hour now, but we've already come up with like a ton of different ideas. We have, you know, we have a vinyl, vinyl dads, actual drawings and illustrations. They don't exist on Amazon. All the stuff that is ranking and selling is extremely, extremely low effort. So if you put some effort in, you get some designs made, you get some assets made that you can actually repurpose in different designs. That's easy money. We've gone over licensing. Again, just opening up the conversation can lead to easy, easy money. We found different pop sockets that we can do. I don't know if I saw this shirt open. Don't. Uh, different passport stuff, which check before you upload it, but easy money. And it's all not saturated. I don't know where people come up with this idea that merch is saturated and it's a terrible platform. Merch has a lot of competition on it, but there's still just hundreds of thousands of places where customers are buying stuff, but that the, the market really isn't getting what they want. The knuckle sandwich. That, okay. Hold on here. Let's see. Knuckle. Knuckle sandwiches are free. Look, okay, look at that, guys. Look at that. 21 results for knuckle sandwich in t shirts. 21 results. Thank you, Andrew. 21, I don't know if any of these are selling. Let's just open a few up. Take a look. That one is, that one's selling super poorly. What is this, though? Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, that is the lowest effort shirt I think I've ever seen. That is one piece of clip art that has been doubled and a second piece of clip art that has just been hidden. I mean, can anyone on this live honestly tell me they can't do a better job than that or find someone who can? If this is someone that's watching this, I'm sorry, but that is, uh, that's pretty bad. That's, that's pretty low effort right there. But, and the fact, and the fact that it's sold, it's sold. Something this bad has sold. So if you can actually figure out how to do just a little bit better. I mean, there's, there's room for a huge improvement here, but if you can do just a little bit better, that's money. That's money in your pocket for doing better than that design right there. Okay, what, what else do we have? Okay, this is not a bad design. Selling a little bit better. Not selling super well, but this is the kind of stuff that, you know, you throw up, you get, you get made, you license. Something like this I'd probably pay a few bucks for. Um, from my own designer. Now, if I sell it at this price, I might recoup it after one sale, I might recoup it after two. Kind of depends on what I'm paying for the design. And maybe it sells every month, okay? It's not gonna make you $10,000 tomorrow like maybe the Eclipse shirt did, but if it sells once every month, that's money in your pocket for a few dollars that you spent one time and if it keeps doing that over and over again, that money compounds in your account. So as long as you can keep doing the research, keep putting up the designs, that's how you make money. You don't, so many of the people are going to, they, they're doing this, they're going to the Merch Hunter, right? They're doing 100 to 100,000 BSR rank, top 100 shirts. They're going in here and they're coming down. They're going, okay, Papa, the man, the myth, the legend. I actually don't think you can do this shirt. But they're gonna be like they're gonna open this up yeah it's been removed can't do this we actually keep the shirts in uh the merch hunter for a few days for this very reason so you can look here if you want to do this shirt and you open it up and you notice it's been taken down that you can actually see okay what's the design what are the features and think to yourself why has it been removed another example is you know maybe maybe they come in here and they see this shirt here okay trumpkin pie make thanksgiving great again 
So what do they do? They go into any type of Illustrator, Photoshop, you know, merchant former designer, anything, and they're just going to type in Trumpkin Pie, make Thanksgiving great again. And they're going to throw up their design and they're going to wonder, why the hell am I not seeing any sales? Nothing is selling. What was me? Merch is dead. So saturated. It's because you're not spending the time, you're not spending the effort to do the research properly and to get a good design created. That's it. It's really it. You just have to put forth just a little bit more effort than everyone else, which is so easy to do. All right. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm reading comments here. Hidden niches. I, I, Christy, hidden niches, I feel like, are... They're what everyone should be doing, but what almost no one is doing what everyone is mostly doing from what i have personally seen in the groups is they're doing exactly what i just you know ranted about they're they're going they're finding stuff that has you know a bsr of five thousand. i mean if you type in trumpkin pie let's just do this emerge research it says 288 right wrong let's just click on the third page 570. Oh, keep going. Let's see if it'll change. No, about 570. So if you come in here and you just look at any of these, I don't really think that any of these are giving the customer a decent choice. These are all just the, the same crappy design over and over and over again. So yeah, congratulations to this guy. He is just, or he or she or whoever this is, is crushing it. But all these other people here are just wasting their time. I mean, you can have a trumpkin pie and, and be different. But, I mean, most of these are the exact same layout. They're the exact same, you know, hair, and cool whip, or whatever you want to call that. They're the exact same. Zero effort. They put zero effort into this stuff. They throw it up, and then they complain about why they're not selling anything. Okay, enough enough yelling about Trump and pies. Let's let's keep going here. So again, don't just come in here and hit search. I mean, you can if you want to see the best selling stuff on merch at any given day. This is what I would do, hands down. But if you want to actually find stuff that's hidden, hundred thousand and above, top hundred thousand. You can switch this to pop sockets or shirts. You can switch the marketplace to UKDE. I'm gonna stick to the US for now. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to go to like the seventh or eighth page, because no one else is even getting past the first page. So I'm going to go where everyone isn't, and I'm going to do what they're not doing. Let's see, officially licensed. Actually, no, there's a band, so don't do that. I can't post a pic of knuckle tats in chat. You post post in the big group with a hashtag merch, merch idea or something. I'll approve it after this. Let's see, mermaid shell, birthday party tea. So a lot of the times with the actual brands for Merch by Amazon, they're gonna say officially licensed. So that's a really good way of saying, don't do this shirt, don't even try to do this shirt, don't put anything related to this shirt in your design. Sometimes they might not say this, but if you don't know what it is, again, just open it up. Now we have a surveyor, great. Uh, open it up and Google it. This humorous cat. <laughs> so I want you guys to imagine for just a second that an actual artist were to create a similar design to this, how much better it would sell. Because one, your cat would look super detailed and you could you could reuse that cat so basically if i were to do this i'd do two things one i'd probably hire an illustrator to illustrate me an extremely detailed cat just a cat he's not going to hold the phone he's not going to have any text on it and i can use that cat over and over and over again with small little niches just like this i can add the text i can add you know clip art or whatever for the bone 
but I can reuse that cat and because the cat niche is huge. I have that asset that I, I either hired someone for or that I license that I can just reuse it over and over and over again. But I know most people watching this are not, they're not going to do that. I, and I don't know why because that is the way you make money. But this design, you know, kudos to them. They have a review. They're selling. But you could do so much better. So we'll go back here. Let's see. London, the Trot Squad. This is this is what I'm talking about. So this is a lick design. Look at the detail in this design. He can he can reuse this little dabbing pilgrim. I think that's what that is. Yeah. He could add text to this design. He can go through and look at, you know, the the best selling kind of niches in Thanksgiving. So the niche down version of Thanksgiving. And he could use this character over and over again. Is there a market for angels? Uh, what, what, what do you mean by that, Patricia? There's a market for pretty much everything you can think of. But sometimes that market might not be on Amazon. That's what people need to like realize. If you're creating a shirt for your you know, second niece twice removed, your market is one person. It is not a large group of people. Why is this price so low? I'll show you exactly why this price is so low. So if you just go to Merch Research and you type in Lick, you're gonna go through here. You're gonna notice this guy price is really low, okay? But you're also gonna notice that once he gets some reviews, he starts upping the price, right? Because what happens is he prices low, he gets traction on his shirts, his or her shirts, you know? And once the traction is there, once you get these, look at this one, okay? This guy, 13 reviews on this shirt right here. This is going to sell forever. This is not just going to disappear overnight. He could price this at $19.99 and keep selling his stuff. But if he had that design with zero reviews, if this was zero reviews right here, this design is, this one isn't anything special. It would get lost in the crowd. He'd never sell another one again. He's got 13 reviews, so that's never gonna happen. And the only way you get 13 reviews is by selling a lot of shirts, because not many people leave reviews. So this brand right here, Lick, I mean, he splits up his his stuff into different sub niches, but they're all the Lick brand. This guy has more reviews than like any other brand that I know of on Amazon that's doing merch. He builds up the sales, he builds up the reviews, and then he ups the price. Because once you have those reviews, you're not gonna stop selling. People aren't automatically just gonna stop buying. But if they don't have that social proof, you know, the BSRs are gonna drop, and people are gonna forget about it, and other things are gonna take its place. So, I know people are gonna fight me all day long. You know, price at $19.99, price at $38.99. But when when sales are down for a lot of people, and people are complaining, oh, I don't, I, I don't know why I'm selling. It's it's because people are willing to up their quality. You know, people are willing to up their quality and drop their prices in order to get that history. So if you're not willing to do that, you are going to lose. But if you are willing to do that, in the long run, you're going to end up making a lot more money because that shirt is going to become evergreen. It's going to keep selling for you. So that is why I'm so adamant on the pricing issue when, when people ask me. All right, here, here's another thing not to do, and that looks like it got removed. Stronger than hate, Pittsburgh. Don't do this either, I believe this, ha. Huh. Yep, so if you see shirts, any kind of shirts with, with that do this, with the dashes and the, I don't even know what you call it, the, the random spaces, they're just trying to infringe. They're trying to get around certain things. This right here is not a bullet point. This is just a mess. Let's see. Ooh, this wasn't taken. Yep. 
So see, as you can see, Merch is getting a lot better at taking down infringing stuff. They're not there yet. Wonder if this one's still active. Yeah, so don't do this. Many people from Merch by Amazon are watching this. Don't do this. Or take care of this. What's your superpower? I teach world heroes. Spider-Man. Not a good idea. Isn't this girl trademarked? Hey, it might be. Here we go look. Oh man, there are a lot of results here. This girl. Hero 35. I do not want to go through all these right now. So I'm not going to. But um if you have if you have let's see over here by the way we just updated this lister if people aren't using it i don't know why you're not using it it's super simple helps you upload really fast but if you are using this one right here so this is free you can actually i'm, I'm on opera right now because so i split up my uh, web sessions between opera and chrome but if you install this you can run this it'll show a little mark here you just click that and it's going to jump through all the listings. So like word by word, sentence by sentence, phrase by phrase. And it's going to actually show you what is trademarked in clothing. So you can actually look at one live listings, or if you have a merchant former account, you can actually run these, this trademark check before you upload anything. And that's going to show you all the trademark stuff in clothing. So you can actually look at it, click on it. It'll bring you over to test before you upload anything. So, to make sure that you don't miss a trademark. But uh, really, we just pushed an update to this lister, so every single one of you should go download this right now. So there's the link in chat. You better click it, install it, and use it. Okay, back to the research. So this is funny. The um, if, you, if any of you guys are still around from when I started this like an hour and a half ago, and I was talking about collections and collectors and things people collect. People collect guitars. And you, you could remove all this text. You could add your own guitar collection. You could have like, you know, maybe 15, 16 different guitars here in a, in a square. And you could put this up and you could change the keywords around instead of talking about whatever this text is saying to people who collect guitars. And that's going to be a sub niche of a sub niche of a niche. So the niche is probably music. The sub niche is going to be people who play guitar. And the sub niche to that is going to be people who play guitar, who are into music, who collect, you know, instruments. So it's it's really it's really that easy to come up with ideas and niche down. I just came up with that off the top of my head based on something we were talking about earlier. Helped me catch one. Andrew says the uh, the merchant former trademark checker helped you catch one the other day. What's the new upload? What's the upload date on this one right here, Jeremy? I don't know. Let's look. Uh, October twentieth, so last year. Uh oh, is this is this is this guy infringing on your stuff? I only use merchant former when I want to make money. That's what's up. Yeah, the Merchant Former Trademark uh, plugin. So, not this one. This one. This one has caught so many stupid, frivolous trademarks. It is not even funny. I mean, some of the stuff that has gone through the USBTO and has been accepted is just mind blowing. I mean, it is going to pull up all the one, the you know, the single word phrases that are trademarked. That's really not going to ding your account. But some of the phrases, some of the phrases that are trademarked are ridiculous. So let's close a few of these. Way too many tabs open. High amount of reviews. Yeah, where this one. So, I mean, this shirt right here. You see, 109,000 BSR, selling very, 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 very well. 
and it's going to keep selling well because it's got 11 reviews and they're mostly positive. Now, if you click this, let's see, let's just scroll down here and look at the bad ones. So, sizing issue, too bad merch doesn't let us say size up. M, um, and the smell. Two things that we don't control. So, too bad we can't really say anything about it, but it is what it is. All right, let's see. Back here. Anatomy of a pew. So, funny story about anatomy of a pew. I would not touch this. There, there. I use this saying in a in a on a shirt that looked completely different. It wasn't even related to this bullet thing. And of course, it got it got uh it got taken down in infringement complaint, which I thought was not right. But you know, I wouldn't wouldn't mess with that. So that's why I wanted to bring that up. The sizing one isn't a verified purchase. Well, let me go back and look because verify, verify. Ah, you're right, it wasn't. So, if you're following chat, Jeremy said that the sizing review down here, right here, is not a verified purchase. So, if someone purchases something from Amazon and they review it afterwards, it's going to have this tag right here. But I can, I haven't purchased this shirt, and I can come in here and I can click write a review. You know, log in, and I can write a review, and it will show up, but it won't have this verified purchase tag. And that's what this is. So this person did not purchase this shirt from this listing. Yeah, I think the sizing might have gotten a little better, but the big caveat to that is when I order shirts, I almost always order the premium shirts. The 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 standard shirts kind of fit me like a you know those crop top football player shirts. They just they feel like a box. I, I hate them. But the premium shirts are really good. Alrighty. Miss me yet? Old Obama wearing a wearing a hat. Sound pretty well. Some people say to stay away from you know, the likeness of certain people. Presidents, though, public figures, I mean, you're going to have to make that, that judgment call on your own. The premiums are way, way small. They're really long, though. The premiums are really long, which I kind of like. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't this phrase used to be trademarked, always be yourself unless you can be? Did the trademark watchdogs uh, take care of that one? I don't know. This, this used to be a trademark. I, I think that it's not anymore. Let's see. Baby Shark, don't do that. Really don't do that. That that's how a lot of accounts are probably gonna get banned. Here, let's just go to test and check the always be yourself. So always be yourself. Unless you can be so yeah, it's it's dead. This trademark is dead. If you're looking for it has a if it has a serial number and a registration number, it's registered. But you can open these up. You can see, hey, look, this was in clothing, right? 025, that's clothing, but it has been canceled. So it is a dead mark. So if you click the TSDR button, it's going to bring you over to here. And it says, registration canceled under Section 18 by the Trademark Trial and Appeal Board. Awesome mark information. So this trademark is dead. You see this big old dead symbol here, which means you can now use that phrase. I remember you used to not be able to use this phrase. I had to pull a bunch of shirts down in the very beginning of merch. But now you can. Apparently, you can come in here and look at the documents. If you aren't familiar about how to use what I just did, so let's see here. If you aren't familiar with this site right here, 
uh, tests, the trademark electronic search system. Go right now to YouTube and watch any tutorial on this. It's literally a must. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get burned. So definitely, definitely, definitely learn what you're doing here if you want to be a merch seller. All right. Ooh, is MTV a, a merch partner now? Looks like it. That is just, that's a terrible design. I don't like that at all. But it's a brand, it's not my brand, so we're going to ignore it. Does Merch Informer tell you if your old products have a newly registered trademark? Yeah, so over here in the trademark alerts, what this is going to let you do is you can actually put in trademarks here. Okay, you're going you're gonna to add them here. They'll show up here, and then every single day, the system is going to check to see, is this mark still available? Has it been registered? If it has been registered, it's going to mark it as unsafe with a with a red red X here, and if it's still good to go, it's going to be a green check mark. So this is the whole reason we built this trademark alerts module right here is because what would happen is I would put shirts up, and then you know nine months later a trademark would be registered, and I'd have things removed from Amazon. And I'm sitting there like, how how am I supposed to go through thousands and thousands of listings and check every single day to make sure they register or not? So the dummy account right here so I just you know you put everything into the trademark alerts and you just check this list once a day so pretty easy let's go back to where we were which was the eighth page I believe hey Neil let's see does the distress filter in the designer only do white and black color distress yeah so Yes and no. I think there's one or two in there that are transparent. If you're looking to do a transparent um, distress filter, what I would do in the designer, let me just, I have that open. No, I don't. So if you have a design, let's just say you have a design here, instead of doing, instead of doing an effect, upload your own like kind of distress background and then just use it use this new mask feature that we did and then you can play once you have the design you can play around with it but this is going to probably get you the best results for uh, the distressing of your design all right where were we, we were somewhere way down here i think yeah mtv yeah mtv is still around i saw that comment i don't don't know why don't know why, but they are still around. Let's see. You are my sunshine. Yeah, not a bad design, not a bad design, but just a girl who loves sloths. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Two reviews though, you know, so this person, I don't know if they priced low or not, but they got two reviews. We can come over here and see if there's a history. Yeah, so that's the best part about the Merch Hunter is you can click this little, this little icon here that's gonna show you the BSR and price history. So we can see that they actually never changed their price here. And the BSR, you know, didn't sell, didn't sell, didn't sell. Bam, it sold, 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 sold. So, so this is this is definitely an evergreen design. So what this tells me is people love sloths. This is just a girl who loves sloths. You can you can definitely switch that up. You know, girl, boy, cousin, dad, mom, aunt, uncle. You know, there's there's a lot of different things you can do. Now, before you were going to upload something like that, make sure it has customer demand. And two, I would personally probably hire someone to make a different type of graphic. That's just me. So, what is this? 
Um. Wow. I wonder. I don't know what this is, but I, I bet it's infringing on something. With all these dashes. Do, 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 do. Ricky Martin on Twitter. Okay, so this is a good example. We'll head over to Twitter. Here's this Ricky Martin guy. So, so he's selling these shirts right here for raise money for what? Charity, it looks like. Yeah, charity start. Okay, so he's raising this money for charity. Okay, he's going to give all the money away, apparently. And then we have this guy right here basically stealing money and selling it on merch. Like, wow. Yeah, I know who Ricky Martin is. I didn't know it was this Ricky Martin. So, <laughs> so uh, I, don't, I don't recognize him personally. I do recognize the name, though. But this is this is unacceptable. So uh, I'm going to be reporting this shirt later to merch. Okay, we will keep going here. Pizza Planet. Not bad, not bad. Again, three customer reviews. This is probably going to keep selling as long as it's not infringing on anyone. But if you take a look at their bullet points, this. This is ridiculously low effort too. What we were talking about earlier, this is just bad. This is just bad. Just you know, you can use keywords in a full sentence, but when a when an actual customer shows up on the page and they're like, "Oh, I wonder what this shirt's about," and they just say, "Gifts for girls, gifts for girls, gift ideas for women, gift ideas," like, it's just incredibly spammy and really bad. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this one. I'll just. I will report that to the merch police, so merch will see it, and they will have uh, probably a terminated account. No, don't do that kind of stuff. Like I'm trying to show you guys, there's so many easy ways to make money and to find niches that aren't saturated at all, without towing a line and without stealing from charity. I mean, really. Pizza Planet is from Toy Story. Yeah, yeah, but isn't the Pizza Planet from Toy Story? Let's see here. Pizza Planet. I thought it looked a lot different. Didn't it look like a... Let's look. Pizza Planet. Yeah, something like this, I thought. Toy Story. But I don't know. Yeah, see, that that's... I would say that that's a gray line, too. You know? A, why is this shirt selling? Well, now that you point that out, you're probably right. It's probably selling because, you know, Pizza Planet is Toy Story related. So that's probably infringement. I'm not going to say it is or it isn't because, yeah, this is different. But now that I'm thinking about it, it's related to Toy Story. Oh, drives you nuts when people keyword stuff. I know there's really I don't know why people do this. I mean, this this must this must literally take more more of your time than just writing a sentence and clicking enter. That's a hire a lawyer type thing. Yeah. So okay, maybe not the greatest idea to use an example of this Pizza Planet one, but again, before you upload anything, always do your research. Always do your research. That's probably the biggest takeaway here. Does anyone know if the account is terminated when you report a copycat and Amazon removes the design? Uh, you're probably never going to know that. Sometimes they do terminate, sometimes they don't. I think it depends on the severity of the infraction. So if you're over here, you know, stealing from charity, then yeah, you're probably going to get terminated. But if you and 10,000 other sellers have that Trumpkin pie shirt we were going over and someone reports you and Amazon takes it down, like, yeah, you probably aren't going to get terminated for that. But it, yeah, it's probably going to be a strike on your account. But to answer, no one really, really knows. All right, what, do we, what else do we have here? I'm probably going to wrap it up pretty soon. If, if any of you guys have any burning questions that you want to ask, drop them in the comments. 
I'm going to finish up this list and then probably head out. Again, this is a good example, even though it's, <laughs> this is a good example on two fronts. One, this kind of design is extremely low effort. This is the type of stuff that sold really well at the beginning of March. He has reviews, so he bumped the price to $21.99, and he's still selling. He's still selling at this ridiculous price for this low effort graphic because he has the reviews. The reviews are so important. They're so important. You like to use trademarks that don't have a serial number yet. So I think you mean registration number because they get a serial number and they go through the process and then get registration number. I will use them only after I read what is going on with the mark. You know, if you go into TSDR and you can like look at the documents if anyone's filed letters of protest. And if it's something that I'm pretty confident isn't going to pass because it's frivolous, then I'll use it. But oftentimes I'll, I'll look and I'll say, okay, does this person that registered this trademark or is trying to register this trademark, do they have an actual brand behind them? And if they have a brand behind them, there's no way I'm touching it. Do you do more live videos on marketing merch shirts? Uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean? Oh, are you talking to someone else? Yeah, you know, I'll do any live videos you guys want. You just let me know. I just kind of did this one today because I was bumbling around and and found this site over here, Art Station. Getting reviews. Uh, yeah, price low. I would price low. Um, I would definitely make sure that your, that your shirts are optimized for smaller keywords. So what I found is that you know, if you have a big niche, say music, you want to niche down maybe more than once. So the example I was giving earlier was music, you know, people who play guitar, is a sub niche and then you sub niche down even further you know people who collect guitars that play music so if you can you know maybe maybe people who collect guitars is a really small niche maybe there's only you know a thousand people who search for that a month if you can get sales there you're going to end up ranking a lot higher for the big niche which is people who play guitar and even higher for the bigger niche which is people who play guitar in like music as a whole if you can rank if you can rank and optimize your listing for the really small stuff it's going to help you rank for the bigger stuff how serious is this new account health stuff well it's it's really it's always been there that's just the first time they've kind of mentioned it you know it's if if you're infringing on a bunch of people and you're tier 10 you're probably not going to last very long at all um, they have said that it's it's kind of like a game system, you know, tier 10 is the first level, and then you know, the further you progress, the the more trust they have in your account. But again, if you're if you have a tier 25,000 account and you're infringing on people, you're still on the chopping block. I sold three basic text designs this week for 25 or 26.99. Okay, um, what, you don't think you would have sold more with uh, you know, graphics and text at a cheaper price? I personally uh, am a huge fan of economics, so I probably would do a little bit differently. But I'm not here to tell anyone what to do. It's just my opinion. So do with it what you will. Yeah, Teddy, if you use the um, product search right here, it'll show you in this column uh, what has reviews and what doesn't. All right, let me try to finish up this list, see if anything else sticks out to me. Again, this, see how this person is using a dash and an underscore. This is probably either taken down or infringing on something. Christmas Party 1988. Yeah, so this is going to be, uh, what's that movie? With Bruce Willis. Don't don't do this. This is part of a movie. Die hard, die hard. So don't do that. Don't do that. Flash wolf. So again, this type of stuff. If this person didn't draw it, this makes an excellent thing to go license from someone. 
And if you license artwork like this, or if you pay for it, you can repurpose it. You can add your own text, and you can see it's priced high because it has a review. Let's see here. Things musicals taught me. Wow, that is some small text. So, I don't know if I would do this. I if, if all of those are actually from a musical, which I'm not sure if they are. They probably are. That's probably like a load of infringement right there. But, you know, the musical niche, you know, people who are into musicals, probably a good thing to actually take a look at. And as you can tell, this one has five reviews, right? It's selling. We found it in the Merch Hunter over here on page eight. And what you can do is actually read the bullet points to this person is actually using some good keywords, even though they list them in a comma form. So thespian, we have theater nerd. That's probably a good one. Drama nerd. Uh, I like theater gifts. I like the longer keywords because they're usually more niche down. Uh, actress gifts. Theater kid shirt. So that kind of stuff is what I would personally use if I had my own unique design in sentence form. What if you pay to use a graphic on a site like FreePick, etc.? Do not recommend those sites. Um, I have basically moved a, kind of towards illustrators who will sit down and create stuff by hand. Since the majority of people aren't doing that, I want to do what others aren't because I don't know. Everyone's probably noticed that the competition on merch is getting, it's, it's increasing and the quality is going up. So if you're, if you're not willing to up your quality by hiring people, then it's my opinion that people are going to start getting left behind. And that's kind of where a lot of the complaining is coming from. So I have personally been hiring a bunch of, you know, illustrators to, to kind of up my game, if you will. Let's see. Polish. Can't hear you on gaming. This. I wonder if this is from a game. It probably is. We were talking about uh, licensing games earlier. I mean, look at this terrible looking design. 13 reviews selling in 1999. You, you could have gone out. Every single one of you could have gone out and found this video game. If this is a video game, I don't know. Yeah, it's an official shirt. And it's from the creator of the Angry Video Game Nerd, AVGN. You could have gone out and licensed this guy and made a whole ton of sales at a high price. So free money if you would have put in the effort, but it looks like they themselves got a merch account. Long sleeves, sweatshirts, and hoodies. They're, eh, they're okay. I mean, let's be honest. The majority of the money on merch is going to be made in t-shirts. Probably followed second by pop sockets. For me, sweatshirts are so far at the back of the list. I really don't list them anymore. I don't wear them. I cannot seem to sell them. But uh, long sleeves and hoodies, they do sell, but they're not like, a huge money maker. They're probably combined around 10%. The animals of the world. <laughs> so that's a good idea. I mean, you could, you could create your own funny little... Don't use their, their same sayings, but create your own... Create your own with your own artwork. Not a bad design there. So guys, there's just so many different ideas out there that you can make your own without infringing on anyone and no one is going to report you because all your stuff is going to be unique. No one at all is going to come report you because you put an idea up on merch that probably doesn't even exist. Uh, 
high reviews. Not bad. That's a rip from Snorkies. Which one? Which one? This one or this one? Probably this one. The animal one. Yeah. But again, you don't for this you don't have to you don't have to use what they're using. You can use kind of like the layout, your own graphics. You don't even have to talk about animals. Maybe you talk about bugs, right? Maybe you talk about different kind of bugs. There's a lot of bugs out there. No one likes bugs. What do you think is too high to place a design on a shirt? I, I just make the designs as big as possible. Because I want them, when you go through, if you go to Amazon like this, and you type in, you know, dog shirt. And, okay, that didn't work very well at all. Let's go to this one and type in dog shirt. And this is what a customer is going to do. Okay, they're going to do this. Mm, I wonder what dog shirt I want to buy. For the second page. Like if it doesn't, if it's not big enough where it sticks out to you, if it's uh, super small, like, most of these are decent size, but if it's super, super small, like this, I can't even read that until I open it up and, and look at it. Dog grooming is my hustle. I don't know if that's sold. It has, not very well, though. So you need to make the designs big enough so that customers can actually, so you get the chance of a customer clicking on your shirt. If, if it's too small where a customer can't read it, they're not going to take the time to look at it. Is Pixabay designed to become a paid site? That's the first I've heard of that, if that's a, that's a thing. Okay, let me close a few of these. Oh my god. Okay. And this right here is just pure laziness, okay? It's the most wonderful time of the year, Christmas ballet, shush, shush. What is this, guys? If, if you can't even take the time to make your title fit, I don't know why you're doing merch. Halloween, Halloween just passed. How many of you guys had good Halloween sales? I wonder if this was taken down. Yep. Pumpkin pie. Okay. <laughs> so they took an actual photograph, it looks like, and just shoved it on a shirt and priced it at $19.99. And optimized it terribly. Yeah, don't just low effort, guys. Put some effort into your listings. Phone. So another thing too, just just so we're clear on the pricing issue. Okay, so I searched from zero to a hundred dollars for a shirt. I'm looking at the top one hundred thousand, hundred thousand above. The average price is not nineteen ninety nine. Now, if you go up here and you type in like, I don't know, one to a hundred thousand, you do the search, the average price drops even further. So the average price of the top 1,000 shirts on Merch, 18 bucks. You come in here, you're gonna notice some of the top selling shirts are not priced at $85 a shirt, like everyone wants to price at. Slice of pumpkin pie. Yep, yep, yep. All right, guys. So that's probably going to be all for today. If anyone made it this far in the video and they want me to do another live video, um, tell me what you want to see below because most of the time it's just me going off into every direction possible. Uh, like this video. Like this video. Drop a comment and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it.